SpaceX Starhopper tests updated and Starship construction updates and roadmap. Link Space successful 300 meter test and Dream Chaser CRS announcement. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? As always, the space industry doesn't seem to stand still. There have been so many things happening since last Thursday's episode, so let's dive right in. Starhopper test updated. It was a bit of a thriller last Friday. First, it looked like everything was go flight. The wet tests were done, the road closures were set, and the NOTAM from the FAA was filed. Then Elon started tweeting that he'd still be in talks with the FAA. In short, against all our expectations, the hop didn't happen on Friday. And we know the reason by now. The FAA wants more hazard analysis done by SpaceX, so all is go on the hopper side. It's just a bit of bureaucracy we have to fight our way through until we can see Starhopper's final flight. Musk is confident though that the hop will happen this week. We already have new road closure dates by the Cameron County office. So that's a good sign. Since the presentation is supposed to happen on August 24th and SpaceX wants the hop to happen before the presentation, this is their last chance to make it happen this week. Though by the time this episode was recorded, the NOTAM wasn't filed yet, so we're still waiting on the FAA approval. Starship construction updates. Times are busy in Boca Chica and in Coco. The Boca Chica Starship had its nose cone removed and put on the ground next to it. This is most likely due to internal work being done on the prototype. This makes it much easier to lower all sort of parts into the structure from above. So we can soon expect tanks to be installed and plumbed inside the Mark 1 Starship. And it looks like the nose cone on the Coco Starship is coming down too. SpaceX has been pulling night shifts in Coco for the last few days to speed up the progress even further. The hangar has been wrapped completely now on both roof sides. This is good for protection but bad for us as soon we won't be able to see what's going on inside. This might be a good spot for super heavy construction. And remember our speculation on where the pipe intersection would go? It fit right into the thrust frame structure and will provide fuel for Starship's three initial Raptor engines. And it's already been lowered into the straight section. This, by the way, also ends any speculation on the second ring stack being a possible beginning of Super Heavy. Building a Super Heavy with three Raptors would not make any kind of sense. We've also had a very nice look at a possible landing leg. Now as always, this is speculation, but it could be the first glimpse of what the landing leg structure on the orbital prototypes will look like. Starship construction next steps. Now the Starship prototype construction process has obviously been sped up. I've talked about it already in my recent episodes. But what about it? What does that mean for the near future and for what we will see happening next? Elon said on Twitter that both teams in Boca Chica and Coco are racing towards orbit, the moon and Mars. And that the two orbital prototypes will fly within the next two to three months. And he said that in July, so that leaves us with one to two months to go. Elon posted a tweet recently describing these next actions needed to achieve the goal of a flying prototype by the end of September. SpaceX's plan to assemble the prototypes will have to be executed fast to meet the milestones within the set time frame. He said that the next steps done very soon on Starship will be to stack fairings and tanks. We've already seen the nose cone removal, so preparations of the upper section are already underway. Then they will add control fins. So they are most likely already being manufactured elsewhere and should be delivered to Boca Chica soon. Then engines and landing gear will be fitted on the orbital prototype. My guess is that the landing legs will be integrated into the back fins. If the thing in the picture I showed you earlier really is a landing leg, it looks like it is retractable. We will get more details on that on the 24th. As a last step, SpaceX will stack both halves together. Then only avionics and other internals have to be put into place. These already exist as it most likely will be Falcon 9 hardware. And that should make the orbital prototype flight ready. And you know what comes after that, right? All these things should be done rather soon, so the announcement that Starship prototypes will fly within the next three months looks pretty realistic to me, assuming the pace is kept at the current level. A big shout out goes to Michel Lamontagne for the renders. Beautifully done, thank you very much. There's a link to his website in the description, check it out. Those are very detailed and interesting renders. He might become a regular on the show if I can get him to say yes. I'll let you know about future plans as soon as there's something to say about it. Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser gets CRS contracts from NASA. The Sierra Nevada Corporation has been working on a very ambitious project for a while now. 
Once, one of the big competitors on NASA's commercial crew program, it became silent around them when Boeing and SpaceX got the contracts. The Dream Chaser is a shuttle-like spacecraft supposed to fly cargo and crew to and from the ISS. It is runway capable, as the space shuttle was, and fully reusable. The company building it is not new to the business. Sierra Nevada Corporation, or SNC, is an American privately held electronic systems provider and systems integrator specializing in microsatellites, telemedicine, and commercial orbital transportation services. Founded in 1963, SNC has been around for a while now. In February 2010, they were awarded $20 million in seed money to begin development of the Dream Chaser project for NASA. SNC got very close to becoming one of the chosen contractors for the commercial crew program, but after being rejected from it, NASA awarded them with six resupply missions between 2019 and 2024 as part of the CRS-2 missions. Now they are back on stage with a bang. On Wednesday, August 14th, they announced that their first of these six resupply missions with the Dream Chaser will be in 2021 with their long-term partner ULA. SNC considered all big launch providers and is still keeping the Dream Chaser launch vehicle agnostic, which means that in theory it can be stacked on any rocket. In the end though, they chose ULA's Vulcan rocket as their first launch vehicle and ULA won't make them wait for long. They will give them the second flight with a brand new launch vehicle, which by the way will be powered by Blue Origin's BE-4 engines. Dream Chaser will be a cargo transporter at first, but the crude version is far from gone. According to SNC, it's just a matter of time before Dream Chaser will take off with astronauts on board. There are two ways of attaching to the ISS. Docking, where the spacecraft steers itself all the way to the docking adapter and berthing, where the craft approaches ISS to about 10 meters and then is grabbed by the Canada arm and docked by ISS personnel. Dream Chaser will be berthed to the ISS with the robotic arm, but it is also capable of docking. If the ship is berthed though, it can hold more cargo as the parts needed for docking can be left out. Dream Chaser will have 20 peroxide RP-1 engines and the attached cargo module will have 6. Construction of these test vehicles is well underway with all major components being finished by the end of the year, so aggressive testing can begin in 2020. There's not much more to say than good luck. Go ULA and SNC, it will be beautiful to see a shuttle attached to the ISS again. Link Space successfully performs a 300 meter hop with their reusable prototype. I've talked about Link Space, a privately owned Chinese launch provider, in my episode about reusable rockets, so I won't go into detail about them again. If you want to, though, click on the info card and watch the episode, it's worth it. Now, Link Space has been busy lately further developing and testing their RLV T5 prototype, which basically is a copy of a well known 2012 hopper prototype from a well known launch provider. But in the end, why not copy what's already working? On August 10th, Link Space reached an incredible new milestone on their road towards a reusable orbital booster. At the company's desert testing grounds in western Qinghai, Link Space conducted another successful test with their RLV T5 prototype, and this time much higher than before. The rocket lifted off without any problems, reached an impressive 300 meters in altitude, descended back to the launch site, and landed after a short hover phase. This basically demonstrates that Link Space has all the technology needed to build a rocket engine and the needed avionics to achieve a vertical return to launch site. The exact same thing a Falcon 9 booster does. Not at the same speeds and not from orbit, but nonetheless, that is one of the steps to achieve what SpaceX achieved. And Link Space is not planning to settle down on this achievement either. For next year, they plan to test a new prototype called RLV T16. It will feature 16 rocket engines and will be capable of reaching 150 kilometers, so well above the Kármán line and the border of space. Then, Link Space will be able to test at orbital re-entry speeds, which makes the RTLS maneuver much more difficult. Exciting times ahead for Link Space! So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? Will the hopper do its final flight on Wednesday and are we going to see an orbital prototype fly by the end of September? As always, tell me in the comments. Here we are again at the end of the episode, thanking my patrons, no actually our patrons, for their help in making What About It? what it is. The Space Nerds constant nourishment for the need for knowledge. And also this week we can put more names on the ever-growing list of helpers. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Cherotal, Frank Martis, William J. Skinner, and Alyssa Pipe. 
Thank you for watching this episode of What About It. If you liked what you saw, please don't forget to subscribe and like as this helps me the most. Feel free to hit me up on my Patreon page so I can get additional help in doing more and better content. As this gives me more time to focus on what I really love doing, to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. And that's a tutu. A tutu. On NASA's commercial crew crew. On NASA's commercial crew. Yeah. From the NASA. Dream chasel. Dream chasel. Good luck. Go USA. Go USA. <laughs> uh. Xing, Xing, Xinghai, Xinghai, Qing, Qinghai, Qinghai. Qing.